here is Noah Hastings. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, it's so exciting. We're going to tell you the story of how Noah Hastings came into the world. Then we will get to introduce Noah Hastings to you guys. And just in case you're wondering, Noah is just right here and he's facing us. So if you hear any little baby noises, it's it's him. <laughs> or if we're looking down, then it's because we're looking at him. We're just making sure he's alright. He's <laughs> yeah. yawning away. Yeah, he's the cutest. We can't wait to show you. So after Ben was done his isolation, we decided that we want to naturally induce labour instead of going into hospital and getting induced because they were talking about it at my appointments and it was something I wanted to avoid. So we were doing long walks, we were doing spicy curry, I was staying active, cleaning up a lot, just trying to get baby boy on the way. And it worked. So it was about 4 a.m. on Friday morning, so it's just gone into Friday and Haley started getting her first contractions, early stages of labour. And uh, we'd both previously discussed that we'd actually thought it'd be a very nice environment to have both of our mums over having that they've both had a lot of experience, both having four kids each. So we had them over to sort of help us out and it was a very, very... Amazing day. Amazing day. It was very relaxed. We were just chatting away. We had some nice music on. It was raining, so we had the, the, the door open and listening to the rain was very relaxing. When my contract started at four o'clock, in the morning they weren't very strong um, and I was I just stayed in bed until my mum got up because she was staying with us that night because we thought that maybe I was going into labour so I came downstairs and I waited with her until Ben got up and then I told Ben I think I'm in labour I was getting contractions about every 10 minutes and they weren't really strong they were contractions they were different than Braxton Hicks which I was trying to always differentiate between the two is this is this a contraction or Braxton Hicks and I knew this was contractions. But I had an appointment at the doctor's at 12 o'clock. So we went to that appointment. It was for a sweep and I thought, perfect, we'll go there. She can tell me if I have dilated at all. So we went into the doctor's and she checked if I was dilated. So she did it and I'm one centimeter dilated. Is that good? I'm so excited. And she says that my cervix is really short, so that's she said that's really good for your first baby. Oh my gosh. Alright, so wow, okay. Yay! <laughs> I was one centimeter, which was so exciting. She said that she thought it was the start of labour, which was really exciting, and she said that my cervix had thinned and she could feel Noah's head which was really exciting so I was buzzing about it and we were we hadn't told any of my sisters or Ben's brothers that I was in labour yet because we wanted to make sure so we came out to the car and got excited called our siblings told them the good news we then went and picked up my mum and it was at home where we just had a nice relaxing environment and we had Nana Jay that made her famous soup pancakes which I had five pancakes my appetite was heightened that day I was starving and we were just laughing so much I had a tense machine which I wasn't fully convinced on it's like a machine that you put on your back and it sends pulses to your back and I loved it I used it the whole day so when you actually have contractions it sends signals from sort of your uterus up through your spine into your skull through your brain and what the TENS machine does is actually, it confuses the signals. Interrupt the, the signal pain and change it into a pleasure. <laughs> pleasure! She knows. Yeah, and, and it wasn't pleasurable, but it definitely made it a lot easier and you kind of turn it up during contractions. Me and Ben were outside walking back and forth in the garden. Ah, oh, it was a good laugh. I think people have this image of when you're in labour, it's just constant, constant pain. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, having one contraction every 10 minutes only lasts about 45 seconds. A well, minute, yeah. Or about a minute. In an hour, you know, that's only six minutes. And I'm not saying it's easy by any means, but I mean, it's not, just to put this out there, that it's not continuous pain, that it's six minutes out of the hour. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot less than what people actually think. So there is time in between to relax and have a chat and, and eat food and do whatever. I found it really satisfying, the pain at the start, because obviously you get 
the pain and then you have a break and it goes away and it's satisfying because you want the pain to come you want it to get closer together because that means that your labor is progressing so I really enjoyed the, the start of it. it was really relaxing and I was just really excited that we were going to meet baby boy we spent the whole day here with the with the grannies and it was about 11 30 at night on the Friday night that Haley decided look I think I need to go into hospital now it was because my contractions were five minutes apart lasting for a minute for an hour so that's when they say you should go in to the hospital and get checked and also my mum was timing the contractions and the app said go to the hospital <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So we thought, hey, we should probably go. So we went there, and because of COVID restrictions, I wasn't allowed to go in. I had to take Haley to the door. They had to confirm if she was actually in established labour for me to be able to go in. So away she went in, and she was in there for about 45 minutes. Yeah, and it wasn't comfortable because you're in an uncomfortable bed, and then getting examined. I'm sure some people have been examined before, it's not pleasant. It was a sad time because we left my mum and I wanted my mum to come to the birth and because of Covid she couldn't so I was feeling quite upset about that. But we went in and got a Covid test and they examined me and she said I was between 2 and 3 centimetres but they don't do between so she said 2 centimetres and she gave me the hydrocodine which is a painkiller and she said try and get go home and get some sleep so we tried <laughs> because you're not in established labor until you're four centimeters dilated so we went back home and uh, we had some rest and we were and you managed to get a tiny bit of rest but i think we were only here for about two hours two hours yeah um and when we went straight back to the hospital and that's when it the, the pain started getting a bit more intense it wasn't like unbearable but it did become really uncomfortable and because i didn't sleep the night before I was really tired. I wanted to get some sleep because obviously labour is tiring so we went in again. We went back in and she was in there for a while. It was about three in the morning when we went back in and Haley got a choice of taking more painkillers and going home or having dimorphine and staying in which means I wouldn't have been able to go in. Because I was three centimetres dilated at this point so she said to me that there's not much point of me going home because I was going to be four centimetres soon and she could give me the diamorphine and I could go maybe get some sleep. So that was a, a score in our book. So Haley went in, uh, as I said, it was about three in the morning and I went and slept on my mum's couch because I wasn't allowed in and then get a phone call about 6am from Haley saying, I'm in established labour, you should come in. So I did. 6.14 in the morning. I managed to get a couple hours sleep at my mum's, which is nice. I've had a phone call from Haley, and she is ready for me to go in, so... I'm just gonna head up to the hospital right now. The dying morphine definitely helped. And because you obviously are not drinking or anything during pregnancy, it was so strong. And I did manage to get some sleep in between contractions, and I could feel that they were getting closer together, but they don't seem so intense. So I got to the hospital. We weren't in the room for very long before we got taken up to the labour suite, which is where Haley was going to deliver Noah. And we learned in our hypnobirthing course that you are meant to complement the five senses to best make Haley feel comfortable during labour, like during giving birth. So, you know, your smell, you can bring a room spray, touch something from home, like a blanket or something, sight, you know, we dimmed the lights and we brought these little candles that are electrical. Taste, that's her comfort foods, like her snacks and stuff. Sound, we brought our speaker and we had we pre-made a playlist, so it's all calming piano music. Yeah, um, and in the labor room, we met our midwife and our midwife was so amazing. She was so nice. And at this point, I decided that I want to get the epidural. So before we get into what happened with the epidural, I should probably mention something that I used throughout my whole labor. And this was from the hypnobirthing course. And oh my God, it helps so much. Anybody that is expecting the baby should use this because it really helped me. And it's called upbeat breathing. And it's just a breathing technique that calms you down and um, it helps with the pain so you just breathe in for four and then you breathe out for eight and I would just count down the breath cycles and it really really helped to keep me calm that is one thing about labor is that you want to stay calm throughout the whole thing it makes the contractions easier to handle and it makes the whole experience a lot more positive so that really helped and I used that right up until well the whole time even when I was pushing I used that 
to calm down between pushes. We uh, honestly couldn't recommend hypnobirthing enough. It's called uh, the Positive Birth Company. And yeah, you should definitely, if you are going to go into labour, you should definitely do the course because it really helped us. We weren't, we weren't paid to say anything good about this. This is just our experience. And it was at £40? Pound? £40, yeah. £40, the best £40 we've ever spent. It yeah. helped so much. So for those of you guys that have already watched our channel and you know us a bit, then you'll know that I'm squeamish. And this was a big hurdle for me, Haley going through birth, because I just... I didn't want to leave her side. I didn't want to be passed out on the floor <laughs> and her having to do it by herself. Yeah. And it was even more pressure because I know how much Haley wanted her mum there and they only allowed one birthing partner and she she chose me, which is great. But um, I was very nervous as to not being able to be there for her the full time. So when we went into the labour ward, it got set up with her bed, got to know her midwife a bit, which was great. She's lovely. And then they had to go put a cannula in Haley's hand. It's like a large drip. And you have to put it in a vein in one of your hands. And basically, I, I spoke to my wife and I said, Hey, I'm squeamish. If you don't mind, I'll look away and just don't explain what you're doing. Because that sends me all wrong. No problem, Ben. That's fine. And she was great. Anyway, she was having trouble getting this in Haley's vein. And she wasn't explaining what she was doing. However, it took her three attempts. And then, <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone else that's squeamish out there. But there was, <laughs> there was blood spurting out of Haley's hand. And it ruined her, her bracelet and like, sh and she was she was saying, oh, this has never happened to me before. I've ruined your, your bracelet, it's drenched in blood. Obviously, I'm trying to stay calm for Ben. I don't want to react because I don't want him to feel worse. So I'm just having to s like sit there and pretend that everything's fine. And it was fine, it's painful, but it was fine. And I was telling Ben, you know, I'm okay. And it was kind of backwards. And it didn't make me feel great. I said, hey, I need to lie down. So I was lying on the cold hospital floor beside Haley's bed. And I was fine, I didn't pass out. I almost did. And you guys can laugh all you want. It's not something I can control. It really is not, <laughs> it's not a pleasant thing. And it seems funny that something so small can make me feel like that. And Haley's actually giving birth to a human. Like, it's crazy. Like, Haley's just an absolute trooper and I'm just, I can't. Anyway, so I was on the deck and I just thought, wow, I'm in for... A treat. This is gonna be a long day. Yeah, That's what we you know. Because I think this was about 12 o'clock and he was ready on the floor. But as I say, I wasn't worried about me at all. I couldn't care less about myself. It was me not being there for Haley and having her chose me to be her birth partner and her mum's not squeamish at all, so her mum would, I know for a fact, would be able to be by Haley's side the whole time. Me and the midwife decided that Ben had to leave the room when I was getting the epidural because they, we didn't want to worry about Ben on the floor and me getting the epidural at the same time. So luckily Ben went and got himself a tray big and nice and chill, five, ten minutes away while I got the epidural. And the epidural was easy. <laughs> I really didn't mind the epidural at all. It was really a relaxing experience the lady was so nice and i hardly felt it they made me feel so at ease and i did not mind getting the epidural i was really looking forward to getting it so i could get some sleep and it worked so well on me didn't it it did i could still move my legs for the first few hours but and i could just not feel the contractions at all i could feel them tightenings but i couldn't feel the actual contractions or any pain and i was in two minds about it but it was because i wanted to sleep and i knew that if i got to the pushing part i wouldn't be able to push this happened to my sister where she became too tired and she ended up needing assistance when she was delivering my nephew so i wanted to make sure that i was rested before pushing the baby out so we decided to get the epidural and before that it takes a couple of hours for them to get the epidural ready and for them to administer it we did gas and air which was amazing i really enjoyed the gas and air and me and ben just had such a good time we were talking to the midwife and getting to know her a bit, taking the gas in the air. It was a really relaxing time and the music was so good. The lighting was nice and dimmed. We managed to get some food and a bit of juice in because once you have the epidural, you can't eat or drink. From my point of view, I was happy for Haley to get whatever medical attention that she needed or any, any form of pain relief. 
I didn't, it, does, it doesn't bother me, it's her body, it's her that's going through it, so I said whatever you think is best, I'm here to support that. So Hayley went for the epidural, which was great, and actually from my point of view, it was amazing because it's not easy seeing someone you love in pain. Like it's not, and like I know little things like you can do to help them feel more comfortable. But at the end of the day, I felt a bit useless because what can I do about your pain? You know, I can only help you through. I can't stop it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this helped a lot, and it was very, a very calming experience. Mm -hmm. The midwife said that it was her favorite room to be in, and that she had such a good shift because we were just laughing and chatting and I was in such a better mood because I was able to be in the room and just enjoy conversation and the music was so nice anybody that came in was saying oh I love the music in here it's so calming we got the new midwife in at about uh, three o'clock and she was just as amazing we had so much fun with her she was so funny we were laughing so much and she was so kind she came over and did a fishtail on Haley's hair <laughs> yeah it was really relaxing I managed to get some sleep actually and Ben slept on the floor and they examined me a few times and I was progressing really well six centimeters then eight centimeters and she said usually you progress quite quickly so they were going to examine me in four hours and then leave two hours for pushing because with the epidural they try to let your body push the baby as far as you can go before you start pushing so it sounded like a long time when we were like another six hours oh my gosh but it went so quickly <laughs> When Haley was getting examined to see if she was at 10 centimeters dilated, which is when you start pushing, the midwife had said, do you want to come down this bottom of the end of the bed, Ben, and you can actually see your son's head. He was. Now, if you'd asked me this about eight hours before when I was on the deck from a cannula in the hand, I would have said no. And I just thought, you know what? How often are you going to get to see this in your life? The midwife was so encouraging and she made me feel very relaxed. And I just thought, hey, it's not often this is going to happen in your life. So I just thought, I'm going to do it. So I went down the bottom of the bed with the light shining. She did have to like open me yeah, up. Yeah, but I could see Noah's head, which was crazy. And he had hair and it was just like, wow. And I wasn't squeamish at all for some reason. I was very proud of myself. It was about half seven in the evening on Saturday night. And the midwife says, I think you'll be ready to push about nine o'clock. And Haley says, no, I'm ready to push now. Yeah. Haley took the decision that she wanted to feel the pushing and it actually reduces the likeliness that you're going to tear because if you can't feel anything you're pushing as hard as you can it's not going to go great so mm -hmm. Haley could actually feel everything from here on out because I felt like the urge to push and she told me that I was 10 centimeters dilated so I was kind of pushing myself and it really did make me feel like I was doing something and she said oh the head was coming closer, the head was coming closer she kept checking and it was easier to see the head by half past eight I think it was we started to do coach pushing which was the hardest thing of the whole experience it was really tiring a lot of people said to me that it's quite a good time of the labour because you feel like you're doing something with your contractions and yeah you are but it's so tiring and you're pushing your body like to its limit and past the limit and, and that can be quite intense when you've gone from having no pain to having contractions I mean I was having them every two minutes and when you're pushing usually you get five minutes between contractions but I was not and I think this was because I got my water broken as well I cannot explain how well Haley did I, I, I can have done it myself like honestly like you are pushing and holding the push for as long as you can and when you can't think you go any longer, you keep going. And then you take one massive deep breath in. And then you go again, do the same thing as far as you can, as far as you can, as far as you can. And then when you can't go anymore, keep going. And then take one more breath. And then do the same thing a third time. Sometimes four times. Oh my word. So, and because basically the baby's head, there's basically a corner in the cervix that the baby needs to get round. So it's not just like a straight push. That's the hardest part. It needs to get round that bend. And basically when you push, it brings the baby closer, but when you stop pushing, the head bobs back. Head bobs back. So like when you push, it goes down, and then when you stop, it comes up a little bit. So it's like 
two steps forward, one step back type mm -hmm. thing. Haley did so well and they only give you about two hours to do pushing before they intervene and, and help. But we were trying to avoid that at all costs. Yeah, I did not want to do that. And at this point of the pushing, you could feel the baby's head pretty much. So I felt the baby's head and oh my gosh, it gave me so much motivation to push him out. So we were pushing and I could hear them talking about intervention, episiotomy, um, which is a cut they do to help the baby come out. And I did not want to do this. So hearing them talking about it in the background made me want to push harder. My word. So in a way it was good that they gave me the motivation to push him harder. So you're pushing, you're pushing as hard as you can and extra. So we did that for maybe 15 minutes. They told Ben that he could start recording and they said they didn't have to do the episiotomy because we were progressing really well. So this got me really excited because I knew that he was coming really soon. In the next push, they do this thing to stop you tearing where you breathe, you kind of pant and that was a lot better than pushing. Um, between contractions I was finding it quite hard to compose myself uh, so I luckily had Ben coaching me and he was doing so well and he was telling me breathe get your breathing under control because you only have a couple minutes and you need to calm down to make sure you have enough energy for the next push. So when Hayley was actually pushing she was getting coached by the midwives and that's when I was able to film but in between I was definitely there the whole time calming her down stroking her head, feeding her water, doing everything I could at least to help you through it. The moment when Noah's head came out. By the way, I was watching everything from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, which so. we were not expecting. We thought, well, Ben said from the get-go, I will be up at your head the whole time. But he wasn't. He was down below. I was down there. <laughs> watching the whole thing. Even at one point, I felt like a hero because the midwives kind of just stepped back and they let me coach Haley, And it was just me down at the bottom Coaching Haley on her pushing and her breathing, keep going, you're doing great. Mm. And I felt like a midwife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was so good and I was so proud of him. And at this point, I looked down and I can see the baby's head is like this far out. When they were telling me to pant, they were kind of helping Noah's head out. And then they would tell me to do a wee push. And yeah, I was feeling the ring of fire, which is a real thing. And that can be quite uncomfortable, but it was fine. You're preoccupied at this point. Your baby is literally about to be here. So they get the head out and I can see his little head and it's tiny and I'm so excited. And his face is down the way. So I can only see the back of his head, but he had so much hair. And then at that moment, she said to me, in the next push, we're gonna put the baby on your chest. And oh my gosh. Isn't that unbelievable that when your whole baby's head's out, it only takes one more push and the, the, the rest of their whole body comes out. Yeah. That's and unbelievable. that was mad. That was a mad moment. I couldn't believe that in literally a minute's time, Noah was going to be on my chest. It was so crazy. So she gave it one last push and out came Noah and, they, and the, the midwives were amazing. And they, they took Noah and they put him straight on Haley's chest for skin to skin. And it was the most surreal moment of my life. It was crazy just to look down and see the little person that we've been imagining, imagining this whole time. And mm -hmm. getting word. to know his little cry, and it was just the most incredible experience. But I was so tired that I just didn't have just didn't have the energy to be emotional. Ben took all the emotion for us. He was crying for literally 15, 20 minutes uncontrollably. He was so. So I couldn't control my I was literally sobbing and my I was wearing a mask of course so and I was like <laughs> and like I was sucking in my mask and I couldn't breathe and the midwives said you need to take your mask off because you're gonna pass out. <laughs> yeah. And oh. to just to give you a background, the the midwife that was looking after us, which was amazing, she stayed after her shift so she could be there when the baby was delivered. The midwife that was looking after me before I went to the labour ward, which was so such a lovely lady, she was the other midwife that was taking over, so it was just such a nice environment. And they both started crying because Ben made them cry, and apparently she never cries, so it must have been quite a beautiful experience. It must have been, and uh, they were very kind. 
and I was trying to film, I was shaking like this, I was trying to film Noah on Haley's chest, and I just, but I was watching him with my own eyes, so I was just kind of holding it. One of the midwives took the camera off me to, to film a little, a few seconds of me and Haley with Noah, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I just, it was, it was such a beautiful moment, I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't control myself, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. it was no, nothing I've ever experienced before. No. And they said, Ben, you've done so well so far. You you need, you've got to cut the umbilical cord. And that was something I told them I wasn't going to do. Yeah, we said, do not ask us if Ben wants to cut the umbilical cord. If he wants to, he will say. But they were like, you've done so amazing. You've got to. So he just... So they handed me the scissors and I cut it and it was just amazing. Obviously, Haley's the real hero here. But I just wanted to say that... It was a sense of achievement for myself. <laughs> yeah, it was, and I couldn't believe he'd done everything that he'd done. I thought it was going to be completely different. And I think my mum not being there forced Ben to kind of step up and deal with his fears, and he did such a good job, and he was there for me the whole time. And I think that's the most important thing, is having such a good support birthing partner to give you praise. I mean, he was praising me the whole time, and when somebody tells you you're doing an amazing job, it makes you want to do even better, so. It was such a positive experience that we were even talking about having our next one. Yeah. So it was such an amazing experience and we got the best gift of life ever that you could possibly ask for out of it at the end. So it was totally worth it. Mm -hmm. It was actually a great experience, wasn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. So without further ado, here is Noah Hastings. <laughs> Are you going to say hello? So this is Noah Hastings. He is the cutest, well-behaved, loving little boy ever. He is just a little dude, isn't he? He is so amazing and we've loved every second of him. He makes us laugh so much. Yeah, and he is just the sweetest little boy in the world. And we're so excited for you guys to finally meet him. It's been so hard not showing you guys on YouTube but we've been wanting to enjoy this first couple of weeks. It's so busy with visitors, everybody wants to meet little baby boy. And you're also just trying to get used to, to being responsible for a little human. So, you know, we're, <laughs> we've been busy trying to look keep after Keep him this. alive. Yeah, keep him alive, try to look after this little guy. Mm -hmm. But he was seven pounds, six ounces, he was 51 centimeters long, mm -hmm. and he was born at 9.51 p.m on Saturday the 7th of August. <laughs> now, the winner of our competition to guess his birthday correctly is Art Echo. Art Echo won, so congratulations. We'll get in contact with you as you've won a prize, which we will reveal shortly. But yeah, I want to do a whole video on my postpartum experience because that was an experience in itself. But we're so happy that we got to tell you our experience and it was an amazing one. And I hope that everyone else that watches our videos that's expecting a wee baby can have an experience just like ours. As good as our one. Mm -hmm. And we are in the making of our birth vlog so you guys can see exactly what it is that happened. We, I know we explained it and we've sh shown you short clips, but we'll show you a full video. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, I'm just taking extra time to edit it because I just want it to be a beautiful memory and a beautiful video for you guys. So mm -hmm. keep your eyes peeled for that one. But I'm just glad we got to introduce little Noah Hastings to you. He does this thing where he has one eye open and one eye closed. So he's winking at you guys. Well, I hold him up like a Simba. <laughs> was that a fart? I don't know if that was his mouth or his ass. But he has a wee personality already, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> Our next video that we want to do for you guys, so you guys can see what we're up to on a daily basis with a newborn, is 24 hours with a newborn. So we're going to film exactly what we do in 24 hours. Everything that we do to look after this little boy. And yeah, so that'll be coming out soon. And thanks for being patient with us. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Um, and yeah, we wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Um, we wouldn't be continuing our videos without all your support. So we thank you very much for that. Uh, as always, if you haven't already, Hit the subscribe button, like, comment, do all of those delicious things. Because <laughs> it really helps us out and we appreciate it most of all. And yeah, that's us as a family of three now, so you can enjoy 
and get used to that. Yeah, so now we are officially the Hastings family. We are the Hastings family, woo woo! So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys! Bye.